going, everybody? Welcome to General Hospital NV, my GH chapter show. Let's get into it. First of all, I forgot to mention last week that Emma is back in town. The girl is all grown up. I love that we get to see her grow up on screen. I mean, it's just like her mama Robin, and she is smack dab in the middle of Anna and Finn's Peter drama. Much like the rest of Port Charles, with the exception of Anna and Maxie, Finn can see that Peter is most likely guilty of going after Andre and Franco and killing Drew. And the thing is, he loves Anna so much that he was willing to go to her and let her know that Robert was working with Jason and Sam. However, when he goes and sees Alexis, and she tells him that Jason and Sam are sneaking around, seeing each other, which is against Sam's parole, and that she is afraid that Sam will end up going back to prison because she, she uh, can't help herself, Finn decides to go to Jason and Sam and let them know that there is evidence that links Peter to the shooter that went after Andre and Franco. Jason and Sam bring this information to Robert, and Robert tells Anna that they have a lead in connecting Peter to these crimes. Of course, Anna and Robert get into an argument, a really loud one, and Peter happened to be paying Anna a visit. So he heard everything outside the door, and of course, Peter uses his connections to get Robert off the case, which means Robert had to call off the deal with Jason and Sam. The thing that makes me furious about this is that Peter didn't even deny blowing the whistle against Robert, and yet Anna is still choosing to defend him. Like, dude, he is clearly guilty. Why would he shut Robert up and get him off the case if he wasn't guilty? Like, dude, you are ruining your life, Anna. Finn even confessed to Anna that he was the one that brought Jason and Sam the information and she felt betrayed, but Finn was like, he is guilty, you are blind to it. And he takes Violet and leaves. He goes to move into the Metro Court. Anna, open your damn eyes, stop protecting this guy, oh my god! On the plus side, Robert did get some good last words with Peter saying, well, you just sentenced yourself to death because Jason is gunning for you in full throttle at this point, so good luck to you. <laughs> I loved it. Spinelli is also watching Peter like a hawk because it is official, he is moving back to Port Charles. Ellie got that job that he was talking about, I don't know if we're actually going to see her, but she's got the job. and. He is going on full protector mode. He needs to make sure that Peter is found guilty and get him away from Maxie and Georgie as fast as possible. Now with Spinelli and Ellie moving away from Portland, that opens up a job position for a lab tech in Portland and Brad caught wind of it and he is going after that position full throttle. Basically, Brad hopes that if he gets Lucas away from Port Charles that he'll be less likely to remember confessing that Michael and Nell's son was actually Wiley. So, if you guys seen the previews that they released uh, today on social media, I'm pretty sure that Lucas is going to find out the truth, or remember the truth rather, before they manage to leave Fort Charles. Finally! It only took two years to do it! I'm sure the reveal won't actually happen until Friday, but with our luck, who am I kidding? The president will probably do something, and then we'll get another preemption, and we'll have to wait even longer for this reveal, because this is... This, I'm just expecting the worst, because we've been holding out for so long for this stupid secret to come out almost two years that I have very little faith that we'll ever find out the truth. Anyway, Nell found out that Brad and Lucas are moving to Portland and she is scrambling. She runs to Chase and even hugs the guy and asks for help as if he's going to help her. Is she really that delusional that she thought hugging Chase would actually work? I mean, come on, Nell. The girl even goes to Michael and Sasha to let them know that Brad and Lucas will be moving with uh, Wiley to Portland. And of course, Michael is heartbroken. It's like he has a sense that maybe the son is his after all. Michael didn't show his face though, and neither did Chase and Willow. I mean, since no one is really reacting to the fact that Lucas and Brad want to move, and that there's no issue, and that it's their decision to make, Nell is making plans of her own. Travel plans, to be exact. I guess it turns out she already knew that Valentine and Marty work together, and she is ready to sell her shares of ELQ to Valentine Cassidyne. Speaking of Valentine Cassidyne, let's discuss his scenes. I am so looking forward to discussing his scenes with y'all because the DNA test took place this week and it was revealed that Valentine for sure is not a Cassidyne and that Helena is in fact his mother after all. I do not know why Valentine was so confident that Helena was going to screw Nicholas over when it has always been clear that Helena despises Valentine. Like seriously, the dude was so confident that he didn't doctor the DNA test. He was just like, yeah, no, it's gonna prove that I am a Cassidyne. No, dude. <laughs> I, I was just like, whatever. But anyway, Valentine was furious and he goes to run to Nina and Nina's like, well, that sucks, but at least you have Charlotte. And he's like, I want you. And she's like, you should go. <laughs> 
and Valentin goes back to the Metrocore to get drunk in his room, and that's when Helena Cassidyne has a ghostly appearance, explaining exactly what she did, how she did it. Mikos, of course, did not know at first that Valentin wasn't his son, and when she uh, revealed the truth to Mikos, he disinherited him, but Mikos apparently died before he was able to do that publicly, but at least he had the codicil all ready to go. As drunk as Valentin was getting, he managed to turn the wheels in his brain long enough to realize that Helena's motive behind having Charlotte be uh, a product of Lulu and Valentin was that she finally got a grandchild with Luke Spencer. That was her motive for that all along. He was so pissed. Oh my god. And he was so pissed that he ran into the Metro Court restaurant and out onto the balcony and he looks down and I'm just like, jump! Jump, dude! Like, oh my god, I want to hit the jump so badly. And Alexis goes out there and she's like, ah, so you're not a Cassidyne. Good. You didn't inherit any of the crazy. And I'm like, Alexis, you know Helena. She is batshit crazy. She has slit your mother's throat. She has cursed people. She has murdered dozens of people, I'm sure, at this point. And you think that he has inherited no crazy whatsoever? Girl, you trip it. Now, on top of Valentine's downfall this week, the icing on the cake was that Jax and Nina jumped into bed. I knew it was coming. I called it last week, you guys. I mean, Maxie made sure that Jax knew that Nina was definitely into him and that she didn't actually think the kiss was a mistake. And so Jax kind of, you know, went back and talked to her and Nina went back to him because Ava convinced her to. I love their friendship. I love their friendship. But anyway, um, they hopped into bed. There's nothing else to say. It was, it was a pretty hot scene, actually. It's a little weird that Jax would just hop into bed instead of doing the courtship thing, but... Whatever, I'm just glad that Nina is letting herself move on from Valentine. Before we move on from Valentine, let's quickly discuss his daughter. His daughter Charlotte is still being a demon child. Franco was sketching a, a sketch of Ava because he plans on doing a painting for her. And when Franco walked away, she drew a twirly mustache on that portrait of Ava. I was like, girl, you know that Ava is not the villain. You watched your father push her off the edge and you are blaming her? Girl, you are Helena's grandchild. Ava may be a villain, but she's not the villain in this story. You tripping, girl. But yeah, now that Valentine has pretty much lost everything, he's going full throttle on taking over ELQ. He's gonna buy Nell shares, and then he's gonna try to get Brooklyn shares. Speaking of Brooklyn, though, um, the scenes with Brooklyn and Sunny and Mike this week were really nice. Like, I, I know I was a bit hard on, you know, the fact that they've recasted Brooklyn, but Amanda Sutton, I think is her name, she's doing a really good job. She had some really heartfelt scenes with Mike, and at first glance, it seemed that Mike knew who she was. They were having a normal conversation and just going with the flow, but then by the end, uh, everyone realized that he thought that she was Lois, which is not really too bad of a jump. I mean, that is her daughter. Uh, but yeah, after that, Sunny and Brooklyn had some good heartfelt scenes saying, you know, you need to actually be present for Mike in these last moments because it's something that he needs and it's something that you would regret not having if you just kind of let Mike be alone, you know? Uh, I just, just, I, those are probably my second favorite scenes next to Valentine's downfall, so I'm really glad that we got to see those scenes this week. Last but not least, let's talk about Brando. Now, Carly had a big interrogation with him, a good conversation, and she felt by the end of it that he was trustworthy enough to let him know that Dev wasn't actually his long-lost child, but someone that was here in the country illegally that Sonny was protecting. Bad idea, Carly. We already know, as the audience at least, that he is not a fan of Sonny. Gladys knows he's not a fan of Sonny, so revealing this was probably a stupid move. And there are a lot of people that are going to go down if uh, Brando reveals that Dev is here illegally. It's not only you, but it's also Sunny, it's Jocelyn, unbeknownst to you, it's also Trina and Cameron, uh, Gladys as well. Everyone's gonna go down for this. Carly, you made a mistake, girl. I'm still convinced that Gladys and Brando are somehow connected to this mob turf war that's happening with Sunny, and I'm sure that they're gonna use the fact that Dev is here illegally against him so that they can take over his territory. That's my prediction anyway. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna end the video here. If you liked it, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.